Hello and welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is episode number six. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about WordPress security. Specifically, I'm going to be talking to you about how to find vulnerabilities in WordPress and ultimately how to exploit them. So WordPress is everywhere. It is all over the internet. Uh, like tw more than 27% of all websites globally use WordPress. Think about that for a second. More than 27% of any website you visit on a day-to-day -day basis, if you randomly picked a website to go to, you're probably going to end up on a WordPress site. Um, and because of that, it's a very highly targeted piece of software. There's a lot of people trying to find vulnerabilities in WordPress, and they're often very successful. Um, and that's due to a few different reasons. Uh, but so when we talk about finding vulnerabilities in WordPress, um, what I'm, what I'm going to talk to you about is that there are a few different elements to WordPress um, besides just the, the core piece of software. Uh, where vulnerabilities can be introduced. So you, you have WordPress core, right? That, that, that's the primary application, the piece of software that you go install on a, on, a, on a server somewhere, or if you're having it hosted in the cloud by some service, you know, they'll install it for you. Um, but the WordPress core piece is you know, the thing that's developed by the WordPress team. And you would imagine they have some sort of SDLC where they hopefully have security in mind at some point um, during that life cycle. Um, but serious vulnerabilities are still very commonly found in WordPress core. Um, probably not as, as serious as the, some of the ones that come along in some of the later pieces I'm gonna talk to you about, but still, nevertheless, like for example, there was a remote code execution vulnerability found in core 4.6 um, not too long ago. Um, but it does at least have some eyes to hopefully weed out you know, the, the various uh, uh, bugs prior to uh, a serious vulnerability being introduced. When we talk about plugins though, plugins are the third party developed uh, pieces that typically get introduced after WordPress core has been installed. Um, so if you have a WordPress site, you can go and install a number of different plugins for free. They, there's thousands and thousands of plugins out there to help you do a number of random different things that make your site do you know, whatever you want, really. Um, and most of the time, these are completely developed by different people that are not related to WordPress. They're just third-party developers. And oftentimes, those do not have the same processes and, and usually don't have security in mind at all. Um, and we will find vulnerabilities in plugins very often. Um, so it, like I said, plugins are again, more likely to contain vulnerabilities than core itself. So, you know, when you start looking at vulnerabilities, th this is the reason I'm saying this because you need to not only look at like the core version of WordPress, but you also need to find the plugins and then themes is another thing. So themes are, you know, the thing that makes your, your site look pretty, right? Like it's the various site design templates that get introduced, um, by, by again, third party developed, uh, uh, uh software developers. And, you know, these are things that you, you know, as a user, you can go install freely um, and without actually testing for vulnerabilities, you might not know that they actually exist. Um, username enumeration. This is something that is common with WordPress sites as well. Um, so it's very easy to enumerate uh, the usernames of, of users who would potentially be able to authenticate to a WordPress site. Um, it's not, it's not like a hidden mechanism at all. Uh, so... The other thing is uh, another a, a piece of the attack surface is the actual authentication mechanisms to the site. So you have the standard login to WordPress, which is at wp-login.php. Now, by default, uh, if you if you have a WordPress site set up, they don't actually have any account lockout policy for accounts that are uh, uh, part of WordPress. So you can literally just brute force accounts all day long by default. Now there are ways to prevent that. You could you could include um, blocks and HD access file. You could have a plugin to prevent uh, brute force attacks. Um, you could completely hide the, the WordPress login page from you know anybody but your yourself if you wanted from your own IP. Um, but another piece that's by default exposed is XMLRPC. So XMLRPC.php is another authentication mechanism you can use to, to authenticate WordPress. Um, and the thing about XMLRPC is, is recently, um, actually it's a couple years ago now, there was a uh, vulnerability discovered in XMLRPC uh, that allowed for brute force amplification possibilities. Now, what that means is you could essentially submit an, a, a single HTTP request to a WordPress server that contained 100 
authentication attempts. So to your, your web server, it looks like you're just receiving one request, but in reality, you're actually, um, you're having, you know, a hundred different auth attempts uh, against the web server. So just, it, you know, it looks, um, it looks like a lot less of an attack than is actually happening. So to find all these vulnerabilities in these various plugins and, and themes and WordPress core and enumerating users, there's a number of different tools already available to do that. Um, WP scan is the primary tool that I, I think everyone probably uses on an often basis. Um, it's a very, very useful tool. It, it has the ability to enumerate your plugins, has the ability to enumerate the version of WordPress it's running, um, has the, uh, the ability to enumerate users, it has the ability to brute force accounts. Um, so I, I typically use WP scan on, on every assessment where we find WordPress. Um, a newer tool that was just released uh, not too long ago is this WP Siku tool, Siku. Um, this is, appears to be a very similar tool to what WP Scan is doing, but I, I noticed they have added in uh, the ability to do some, some SQL injection and XSS attacks as well um, for specific parameters on a WordPress site. So it gives you an additional capability um, for potentially finding new vulnerabilities and plugins and themes and WordPress itself. Um, Metasploit, so after you've, after you've found a vulnerability, let's say you've scanned a site with WP Scan, you now have you know, a potential list of plugins and vulnerabilities that are associated with those versions of those plugins. Now we go over to Metasploit and try to cross-reference um, you know, the various plugins and vulnerabilities that actually have exploits available for them in Metasploit. Metasploit has a ton already in there. Um, ExploitDB is another one. There's a ton of vulnerabilities that are not in Metasploit that are in ExploitDB um, because, you know, a lot of times the, the exploit for, Met, for WordPress is just like URL, right? Um, like it could just be, um, you know, a parameter-based exploit with URL. And a lot of times, you know, ExploitDB will have that available. Um, and, you know, InMap actually has a few NSC scripts as well for perf performing a few different attacks against WordPress. For example, you can user, uh, enumerate users and perform uh, brute force uh, authentication attempts. So let's get into doing a WordPress attack demo. So I've got a WordPress server set up here. This is a pretty standard WordPress server. I, I built it uh, with a few different vulnerable modules to kind of show you what's going on um, and how to use these tools. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run WP scan uh, with the dash s URL option against my WordPress site. And the um, with, with, uh, with WP scan, you can give it the dash s enumerate option to go ahead and enumerate all the various um, you know, plugins and themes and as well as, as users. Uh, so you can see it going through the plugins here. So the thing with the default enumeration of plugins is that it only does the popular plugins. So you can see it's only doing about 1500 plugins here. Um, one word of advice here is that there are thousands and thousands of plugins and a lot of them that are very vulnerable to various attacks. So I highly recommend if you if you are scanning a site to give it the dash dash enumerate AP uh, uh, parameter. And the reason is because that will actually go through all plugins. Now it can take a long time to run and it's going to generate a lot of network traffic to do that. But there are a number of different uh, uh, plugins that will not pop um, if you, if you just scan it with the default WP scan option. And there's a number of different plugins that are vulnerable to some very, very critical vulnerabilities that you might miss if you don't actually scan for all plugins. Um, same thing with all themes. You can give it that, the dash dash enumerate AT option for all themes. So let's go through this real quick. Um, you can see that it goes through you know, your robots.txt file, um, tells you, you know, the XML RPC uh, interface is available that I was mentioning earlier. Um, you know, it gives you the WordPress version, a few different vulnerabilities in the WordPress version itself. Uh, we've got a theme here, um, and then you know it starts looking at the plugins, right? So like you can see, we have this Ajax load more. Uh, we've got this uh, authenticated file upload and deletion vulnerability. Now this is the one we're going to exploit today because I I know it's a very reliable vulnerability, um, and to show you how this works, uh, you know that's that's the one I'm going to exploit. We've got a few different plugins here, same thing, um, you know, a number of different things to look at. Um, and then you can see here, you know, enumerating users, it does find the three users that I have set up for this specific WordPress site. So very handy. Uh, so that's WP scan. So let's go over to Metasploit real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the exploit that I know um, is uh, associated with that, that, uh, that Ajax vulnerability that I was um, 
was able to see above. So it's the Ajax load more file upload module. Okay, so what we need to set up here is we need to, first off here, let me show options. We're gonna set the R host of the WordPress server. So this is gonna be 168.103.190 in my case. Um, we're gonna set the WP username because this is this specific vulnerability, vulnerability is an authenticated attack. So you do have to actually have credentials for this specific vulnerability. There are a number of other uh, vulnerabilities out there though that do not require uh, authentication. Um, but this one, we're gonna go ahead and set up the username. We're gonna set the, the password for my, my user here that I know. Um, that you know, like I could have gotten through brute forcing. Um, you know, after I've after I gained this username here by enumerating it, I could have gone and done a number of brute force attacks, right? Because I mentioned earlier, there's not really a lockout pro process there. So brute force, figure out this guy's password, which is spring 2017. You know, super strong seasonal password, and then we can run it. Now this module is going to go and it's going to try to set up a uh, reverse interpreter session for me. Um, like I said, it's pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, um, it works really well. So you can see we've got a interpreter session one opened, and let's give it a second to wrap up the deletion of this uh, the payload file that was uploaded, and we should be able to interact with our interpreter session. Yep, there it is. So now we have our interpreter session. Um, oh, here, let's go ahead and. Go into shell and we can run ID. Yep, you can see we're running as a WW data user. Um, and you know, we're in we're on the server at this point. We have a shell on the WordPress server itself via a vulnerability and a plugin. So just you know that the point is that I'm trying to make the point I'm trying to make here is that plugins like this specific one can contain vulnerabilities like like this that allow attackers to get shells on your WordPress server. Um, and then depending on whether or not you've actually patched the OS at that point, you know, would depend on whether or not I could actually uh, do privilege escalation attacks. Um, you know, there's, there's a number of other things. That's a completely different topic, but, um, <laughs> you know, there's potential there for escalating privileges. So for the blue team, um, you know, make sure you're enabling automatic updates for all of this stuff, right? So WordPress core, all the plugins, there is the ability to enable automatic updates so that you're getting the latest patches so that, you know, if, if there's a, um, a, new, a new patch out that patches a serious vulnerability like this, that it's automatically installed. Um, you know, implement two factor in all your authentication mechanisms, mechanisms where possible. Um, you know, so if I, get, if I get a credential to log in like that, but I can't actually get all the way in because there's two factor set up, you know, that's gonna prevent that specific attack. Another thing, implement a WAF in front. There's a number of different WAF services specifically for WordPress that help prevent against a lot of these types of attacks too. Um, and then, you know, I found this WordPress security guide that I, I included a link in here that includes a lot of really good information. So if you're a WordPress admin, I highly recommend checking out this link right here in, uh, in particular. And then, you know, keep on top of the vulnerabilities that are coming out with the, uh, the WordPress Vuln database at wpvulndb.com. And you can get mask scan. I got a, I got a, or a w, I'm sorry, not mask scan, WP scan. I've got a few different links here uh, for the WP scan and WP secu. And I'm on Twitter at Daftac. Thanks so much for watching.